Hey everyone, this is Pam Bam Richard presenting to you AC Radio at www.abyssalchronicles.com where tales is our life. This episode is for Sunday, September 30th, 2018 as I'm joined here by AC Radio co-host Dimension Slip and AC owner Abby as we're here to discuss more on Tales of Crestoria's recent reveals from Famitsu and Tokyo Game Show. And... Quite a lot of information, in fact. So we're going to get things started right away by talking about the characters that were all revealed. So we're just going to gunshot them one by one so that way we could go through them all. And if there's anything that you... What's up? Sorry. Yeah, gunshot, you know, spitball them, (laughs) like fire through them. Well, okay, fine. Vicious, yeah, he uses a gun. I get it. So keeping... (laughs) <laughs> keeping <laughs> keeping the pun in mind, we're going to go through all the characters, and if there's anything that the two of you want to comment about these characters, feel free to interject right away. So, first off, in the Famitsu article that was uh, that we posted about on September 19th, we learned about Misera and Vicious. Now, Misera, as listed here on our post, uh, thanks for everybody who translated in our team is a young orphan who was raised in a monastery where Kanata's father is in. Though she has the strength to never lose herself, she'll dangerously do anything if it means it will save Kanata. She bears hostility towards Vicious, who is a Toga Oni, who seems to be leading Kanata towards evil ways. And when I look at her design, the first thing that came to mind was Riala. Really? I don't know if it's just me. Yeah, 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 it kind of did. Yeah. Leia. Because the common one and also on my Leia. end was yes, Leia. Yeah, but they I the, didn't see the me too. I didn't see the resemblance to reality too, but I don't know, I guess it's the dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> dead eyes. Well I think fashion wise she does seem a little more realic as Leia's a little, you know, less frills and I don't know. Fun. Leia is more fun. Her design is more fun than the dead Adi Riala. Wow. Okay. (laughs) No, no, that's all right. I mean, the the, the biggest takeaways for me, because like the the big pearl in the middle was also a giveaway as well with like the short hair and the headband. Like all of that came to mind. But I remember people were making jokes about her dress. I think Vel brought this up where the two pearls in the middle of her dress are similar to QB's eyes from Madoka, uh-huh. and now I can't unsee that <laughs> because of the color scheme. Oh my god. Great. Thank you, oh, Rich. Wow. Now I can't unsee it either. <laughs> By proxy, thank you, oh, Belle. So, oh, okay. <laughs> um, honestly, <laughs> Misera, yeah, it certainly is. is. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> but with, with that aside, she seems, based on her description here, is just your generic tales of female lead. We'll just see how she vies with the rest of the cast as we learn more about the game. It kind of reminds me of um, like um, Mikasa from Attack on Titan, to be honest, like her bio. Hmm. Because um, yeah, very because, dedicated to the main guy. Yeah, minus all the seriousness to her, like, I presume. Yeah, that too, and the dead eyes, sort of. But <laughs> and the dead eyes. <laughs> Go back to that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Abby. <laughs> all right, so yeah. Anyway, next yeah. up we have is a uh, vicious, and his description is that he's despised by the world. Um, and he is a frightening being known as the Toga Oni. He lives by the motto, I'll live my life how I want to. During his journey in a search of a certain place, he stumbles upon and helps out Kanata and Mizura, who have just been branded criminals, and joins them. He seems to hold some sort of special power. And yeah, his weapon of choice are guns. And if you could tell in the scan that we have, his stance is very similar to a certain other character who uses guns. And if you think very close, cough, cough, Alvin, cough. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm still very sick right now. Please excuse my uh, my illness. But I mean, the designer's comments are very clear, as said here that. 
um, by Miyuki Kobayashi, Vicious was designed with the mindset of him being wild, sexy, and cool, and it's very much shown in the design with his sh- with his abs being very exposed, just like such. Yeah. You know, I think it's very like interesting that they had a female designer do it because you know, it's like basically something like her dream, not really dream come true, but <laughs> what she'd think is sexy on a guy. So her own it, perception. Yes, so it kind of comes out in the design of vicious, and hmm. it's very interesting to say the least of it. I mean, the comment from Yuki Kobayashi is very hilarious. We were talking about it on the chat in Discord, I think. Oh yes, I remember and, that. Like, yeah, and I and I think it was it was Kapi who said you have to include that in the in the article. Like, why? And then I read it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yes. So it very much establishes all of those points that uh, Miyuki was going for, and. This was the same person that was showed in the trailer and, well, the teaser trailer way back. And I thought he was going to be the villain, but based on his bio, he seems to be a bit of a composite character. Like somebody who could be a a protagonist, but also at the same time as a villain, which also reminds me of a... <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick. Please excuse me. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, overall... I'm curious to see how he's going to interact with the rest of the cast, and there's something that I will point out about him later on, which I found very intriguing. All right. All right, sure. I'm not sure if we're thinking the same thing. We'll we'll uh, cross that bridge when we get there, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. So, now moving on to the characters that were revealed at Tokyo Game Show last weekend. First off, we have Aegis Alver, and the description here indicates that he's a beautiful knight who holds no reservations. Aegis is the young captain of the knights from the kingdom of Midas Megur. He is an honest and innocent character who honors the right thing to do, making him a bit hard-headed. As someone who completely believes in the vision orbs, he stands in Kanata's group's way, whom have just been branded as criminals. I mean, Miklio... That's the first thing that came to mind. In other words, Mikleo and Eleanor's <laughs> love child. There you basically. go. Basically. Yeah. Oh, basically, yeah. This character was also designed by Miyuki Kobayashi, and this is like the first of the three characters that we're describing here that people sort of felt that didn't feel very tales of. And I don't know. Really? Did, there oh. was some concerns that I read or heard online where people were like, oh, the first two characters, Kanata and um, Mizura, they're both very Tales of Esque, but the other characters, they feel like they're from a different franchise, and there were sort of some concerns that were coming in for... for I, I know. Oh, come on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Personally, I, I, I really dig the designs. Like, it's been a while since. Oh, I see it. Oh, I see. But um, sorry. What was that slip? Oh, uh, oh no. I mean, personally, I kind of really dig the designs as a whole. Cause, like, um, I'll find the proper way to explain it later. But right, right now, my um, impression, like after I saw all all six of them lined up, it's good. But anyway, we'll leave that for later, I guess. Yeah, and... Yeah, like, I'm always open to change as well. And this is all a nice, refreshing change of pace, which we'll be describing more later on. But I think the biggest takeaway that we were talking about prior to recording was the voice actor, which I think both of you are very big fans of. Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. (laughs) Tatsu Hisa Suzuki. And what are his uh, memorable roles that both of you know him as? So, uh, Tatsuhisa Suzuki uh, also voiced Noctis, Lucius Calum from Final Fantasy XV. I think that's one of his more notable roles in the video uh, in the video game industry, as well as I think he voiced someone in Final Fantasy XIV. Yes, um, he voiced um, Imer- Imeric from Final Fantasy XIV. 
which is so, uh, a favorite yeah. game of mine. But anyway, yeah. So he's. Although I think he's mostly known uh, for the Uta Pre franchise, uh, the free anime, and he's also the main vocalist for Old Codex, the band. Yeah, sounds about right. Like, I've always wanted to have him in a Tales game. I just didn't expect it. We're going back there. I didn't expect it to be in a mobile game. Right, right. It is um, So it is cool to see that he has that sort of resume, considering how much he's been. His character has been very well-liked so far, as far as I understand, in terms of reception. So. Well, it's a white-haired pretty boy, so you can never go wrong nope. with that. Yeah. Goody Two Shoes Knight, who will yeah. eventually join join the party mm-hmm. because change of heart, whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the usual Pretty bits much. we hear in the Tales of Franchise that is for certain. All right, next up we have on the list here is Yuna Azeta. My yeah, mother. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes. There we go. Thank you. Um, this character was designed by Daigo Okamura. We already know who he has designed in the past. But the bio listed here is that she is a skilled journalist and older sister character. Yuna has a bright personality but tends to lie, though she seems to just be a talkative girl with a peculiar dialect. She's willing to do anything dangerous if it means pursuing the truth. She cooperates with Vicious in running a black market information store. And, yeah, I mean, she's just, as Slip has mentioned, like, <laughs> Marta's mother, kind of. Like, she, she very <laughs> much fills in the older woman archetype in the franchise, as far as you can tell, based on the design and, dis- and the description. It's the chest. Yeah. It's the chest. Right yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> but yeah, is she... Her hair is... Are, are those pigtails? Or... I'm not I sure. I think that's... I think they're pigtails. Yeah. Yeah, it's most likely pigtails there. And you can't really tell because, like, the only other time that you ever see her is in that concept trailer. But we'll talk more about that later. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. And the final character in the cast to sort of round things up is Orwin Granberg. He is a frank and tired old man. Orwin has lost all motivation and the will to live, though he has his wife Nina and 10-year-old daughter Aura. He's mostly been living off the money his wife is earning. So, Raven 2.0. Yeah. Okay, we have our... He's back, Raven 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, minus the whole actually having a family sort of ordeal. So it is nice to actually have somebody in the cast who does have their own family. Well, kind of now that I think about it, it kind of reminds me more of like Clark in that sense, where he sort of has somebody he's teasing with, with Merald, I guess, in Fantasia. But this is like one step further in that sort of archetype. So it's nice to see that sort of explored in this character. And, like, yeah, it's an interesting person to fill in the, you know, the Osan archetype in the series. So I look forward to seeing where they go with him. Because right now, um, he really gives off a very unlikable impression. So it's going to be interesting to see right now, yeah. how they turn that around in the game. They kind of, well, not turn around, more of... Actually, got a better impression of him because of the sin, or the sin, or the crime he did. The the oh, yeah. picture we had earlier that shows uh, what crimes or sins they have, and his was I I believe was I loved my wife. But hmm, the the question is, what did he Heels. do <laughs> in the name of yeah. that? So yeah. All right. Probably <laughs> killed something. Yeah. Did he kill someone or I don't know what else. anyway. Yeah, that's most likely I mean that's a very plausible speculation, but overall we have a very solid cast of characters here and we've talked about their designs and I don't know, I don't I still understand why people are freaking out over it, but be open to change and this is going to be a Tales of game that is going to make some changes in some standard formulas as will be 
talking about with the concept movie. Um, but before we move on to that, is there anything else overall that the two of you would like to talk about regarding the cast? Um, as cast, okay. Um, Abby, you go first. Uh, okay. Uh, so I, I think this was the other day. Was, yeah, the other day, the Twitter, the Tales of Pastoria Story official Twitter, had a sort of a uh, sort of survey. Like, what did you want to learn about the cast? Uh. Oh. And I think what, what the the choices were the height, really, the height, the age, the dominant form, that's important, and the birthday of the characters. And I think the what one was the age. So yesterday, they revealed that Kanata is fifteen years old. Yes. And they're revealing Misera's today. I'm just not sure what time. That's surprisingly young, like. It's very um, yeah, as I just said earlier, like um I for some reason I really dig the cast lineup, like when you just line them up together, like in the um in the video or in their merchandise, like there's really something appealing about it because I guess part of it is the colors, like they feel a little more yeah. colorful compared to um other casts for some reason. And uh, yeah, I think I really dig like the stylistic differences because it's it's more refreshing than like um, something that causes me apprehension. So yeah, yeah, they're like this is the most colorful colorful cast we've had in a while, literally. <laughs> yeah, no green though, <laughs> no green. Oh well. Uh, well, each is just kind of leaning towards blue green. Yes, uh, yeah, kind of blue green. So I guess the one big thing for me with this cast is how they're all connected because of their their sins, and that was a big thing that was revealed by the, um, I believe it was the producer when he was talking about it in the previous Famitsu, and it was just. I do want to see how those dynamics are going to come into fruition because it's sort of giving me a similar vibe to how Tales of Berseria's cast sort of gelled together in their own little motivation. So I'd like to see them, i like to see how they'd interact when they're connected by sin as opposed to their own motivations. So that's something that I'm anticipating and looking forward to once we learn more about this game. <coughs> Okay, so with the uh, with the cast all covered there, next up we're gonna talk about the concept movie trailer that was revealed a couple days before the Tokyo Game Show, the Tokyo Game Show for Tales of Crestoria. It was animated by anime studio Kamikaze Doga, a studio that also worked on JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Digimon Cyber Sleuth. Yeah, yeah. And as well, the song was by DJ Yasutaka Nakata, who has who has a lot of songs in his discog- discography, being part of a a a team known as Capsule, and as well contributing to some animes. Uh, the most major that's noted is One Piece Film Z, and the the trailer also showed off how the vision orbs operated so it sort of like had a large display and in front of all the people as they were like cheering and voting and it shows exactly how the murder took place and how the executioner is then chasing the characters Kanata and Mizura and we also see the group shot at the end there and with this concept movie the first thing that came to mind right away when i watched it i was immediately reminded of the old school pc games like the amiga uh, particularly delphine software with their games like flashback or another world because the the song and the graphic style really reminded me of how those computer games were animated back then because they had like animated cutscenes that were very limited in color palette and had very sharp edges and it was a it was a sign that you knew that this game was going to be very different yeah the the style is like it's not um 
production IG, UFO table, or with studios. So it's like, wow. And none of them, like, there was there wasn't even an attempt to like you know try to mimic any of those styles. It was completely their own, and I think it's great. Yeah, Abby, how about you? I'm wondering though, this is just this is just a concept movie, right? It's not like it's not part of the opening. Yeah, yeah. At all. Like it's yes. literally just a concept movie. Really, I thought oh. it was the um, I thought it was the actual um opening-ish, but, hmm. Really? I... I mean, it feels like an opening. It, like, it'll fit as an opening, so... It kind of felt like an opening really to sure. me, sort of, but... Hmm. Yeah. It kind of makes me wonder, though, if... And what I really like about it is the music, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the music was very techno, and it kind of makes me wonder if they will maintain this style, because at the start of that movie, it did show some full-color, well, somewhat full-color shots of Kanata and Mizara both running, and then it changes to the view where it was more of that computerized color palette. And I get the feeling that it's probably simulating how everybody views the vision orbs, and particularly the only colors that's very jarring from what they see in the vision orb was the blood that you see on Kanata's knife there from his supposed victim. So I, I'm very, I really do hope that they keep this because I'm always open to something fresh and new and different because different makes things, makes franchises progress. And this is a type of difference that I would like to see it maintained in the development of Crystoria, but I wouldn't be surprised if they end up fully coloring this entire concept movie, which is most likely, as you mentioned, Abby, a opening for the game. So, sorry, was there something that you were both going to say? Um, nah, I'm good. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So now with that uh, concept movie out of the way, um, the next thing that came up video-wise was the Tokyo Game Show trailer itself that did show off all the characters, including the reveals of Aegis, Yuna, and Orwin, and as well with the very Latin-sounding piece, which was a very interesting choice again difference difference that we aren't used to in the tales of franchise and as well uh yes they were all introduced and they all talked about their well they all have their quotes and whatnot so what did you both think about the overall reveal of the trailer here for tales of crestoria the character trailer i mean to say Uh, should I go first? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Okay. So what I liked about the character trailers is they showed, um, I think their branding. Is this the branding for yes. when they become criminals? The different symbols that they showed uh, at the back of the character art. And what's uh, intriguing about that is if you move over to, what's his name? Vicious's is um, part of the trailer. You'll notice that there's no... Uh, emblem or no crest for him. I think it's because I'm not sure if we've covered that in the article that he's uh, a or did. whatever. What is it? The... Yeah. yeah, and he's they're sort of like bad people in their worlds. Like they're not. I don't think they're people who became criminals. Like they're they're considered evil or something to begin with. That's why you'll notice it doesn't really have a crest. Right. Us. Uh, yeah, Slip, how about you? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, that... I did notice the crests, but I wasn't really paying attention to Vicious, so um, that observation was pretty <laughs> interesting. Like, But I think it makes sense, like, with what they've revealed so far. Right. I wonder why they're different, though, for each character. Yeah, like... I look forward to knowing, I mean, maybe why the styles are different and, like, maybe depending on the type of sin, does it, is, 
there a particular thing that appears or one thing that I did notice because of those crests that you mentioned, um, I was reanalyzing the trailer there, and I did pick up on what she knows about Vicious there too, Abby. And to build up on that, I get the feeling that, because I mentioned this in the last show, because when Kanata grabbed that sword, his crest was reacting to said sword. So I feel like there's a connection to the crest that yeah. they have and the weapons that they use. So part of that that comes to mind is that when you look a little bit closer at the crest for Aegis, uh, Aegis has a bit of a blade sort of crest that's slightly different to Kanata's, and we already know that Kanata wields a sword, and Aegis wields a spear. So if we were to recognize the the rest of the character's crest and what weapons that they wield, that they could wield, like, for example, I get the feeling that Orwin based on his crest, it appears like he might um, equip some kind of, like, ranged weapon in a sense, but you can't really... T yeah, I was thinking like that, ball? but then I was thinking, wait, I might be proxying Raven a bit too much, but then <laughs> I was also... <laughs> I was also thinking because the only time that we get to see their weapons was just at the end of that concept trailer art. Um, yeah, concept and you trailer. see that he sort of has something in his hand that doesn't really appear too much like a bow at all. Like it appears to be more so like some kind of object that is similarly shaped to the one that is for his crest. And it's a gun. <laughs> no, no, Vicious okay. is the one with the gun. Though we can't have two gun users. Maybe I don't know. It looks a little like I don't know if he's holding it in his fist. Maybe like um, oh, knuckles or something. What do you call a crossbow? No. It could be a crossbow, too. That would be a very small crossbow, yeah. then, if that's the case. Unless, like, it suddenly grows in size. Oh. But mostly also thinking, because um, Vicious is already ranged. He has a gun, so... I don't know how likely, like, having that redund redundancy would be, or something. Yeah, it does really look like they reflect the weapons. Because I was looking at Yuna's again. Hers have like these, I don't know, yeah. spider leg things. And if you look at it again at the concept trailer, uh, when uh, her shot is shown, she looks like they have, she has sort of wires yes. around her. But I guess it's part of her weapon. Yeah, like I kind of get like a vibe now that we're talking about it, a little bit of, uh, of Dezel's weapon from Tales of Zestaria. So it might be sort of inspired from that. Misera is, is a little bit of a mystery, though, because you'd think that it'd be sort of like a staff, but it seems to be more like a... It's around her hand there as well, so it might be some kind of, like, bracelet or a spellcasting bracelet or something along those lines. But if you look at her crest in the trailer, I, I can't quite make heads or tails as to what kind of weapon that could potentially emulate. I thought I'd see it in the sneak peek of the battle system, but yeah, she's just standing yeah. there. Yeah, but we know for sure, based on the movies that we've seen, that the crest are very much well related to the weapons that they use. And this also brings me to talk about Vicious, as you previously mentioned, Abby, that he doesn't have a crest, yep. but I get the feeling that this is me speculating based on everything that we are, we know so far, but maybe the vision orbs weren't supposed to be used for branding criminals. Maybe, maybe yes. it was they were supposed to like, like cause some kind of hidden power to su surface for particular people, and vicious might be the catalyst oh. for that because he already has one branded as he was born with it. I I'm just again all speculating based on what we know so far. Yeah. Born with it. Yeah. So I, I feel like that might be where it could be going um, towards, but, but go on. Uh -huh. um, for me, um, what I got, what, the vibe I got for Vicious during the, uh, during everything was that, like, he's sort of like, the, he's the instigator for everything, I guess. Or I'm thinking. Like, if you look at, 
well, most of them anyway. Uh, the character descriptions, like he's mentioned at least once, uh, in Yunas, in Miseras, in Kanatas, and then you know, notice how like, I mean, he got his own the teaser trailer, the the one that was very uh, from the very beginning. Uh, they had one in Kanata's point of view showing him, and then in the concept trailer when they um uh, transition into the group shot. The first one they show is uh, vicious. It kind of makes uh, gives me the feeling well, that like either uh, either he'll start whatever is going on, or like he'll actually lead the party at some point, or like at the very beginning, and they'll just you know the usual transition into the main guy. That'd be Kanata. Yeah, I agree with that because because of the stuff you said. You're making him seem important. Yeah, and that's our biggest takeaway from all the movies here and all the descriptions that we got from Famitsu. Vicious definitely seems to have a bigger role than what seems to be in the surface. So, overall, everything that was like, whoa, actually, we didn't even get to talk about this yet. The gameplay screenshot. Yes, the oh. gameplay screenshot, oh, yeah. uh, that certainly turned some heads. That because, was, yeah, that was a shocker for most people i guess yeah and the biggest indicator of that was the whole in um sign underneath the menu at the top right corner saying player turn and it implies that it's turn based no yeah and as we all know as tales of fans turn based does not generally equal tales of because we know the series as an action rpg unless you played fantasia on the game boy color but yeah. Uh, well, what? I, I I haven't heard of that game before. I only play Tales of Games. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Wow. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I apologize. Oh, to all the Hysteria fans, I keep on playing the game, but I kind of stopped after some time. But <laughs> that aside... <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean... I know. I, I'm trouble. calling for it. <laughs> it's, it's, whatever. Anyway, so... Based on the screenshot, you can tell already that Vicious has the Alvin pose and Kanata has the Crest pose, but the whole turn-based thing is the big warning sign. And I guess like a part of that that comes to mind for myself is that I really need to see some actual gameplay footage, like more movies and whatnot, as opposed to this yeah. one screenshot, because everybody is freaking out, rightfully so. I'm just willing to wait to see what will happen with actual footage. I didn't really mind that it was like that. Um, actually, I had a sort of a gut feeling that it would be turn-based, um, but... Like, I didn't really mind. I mean, of course it's sales. Like, it has to be real time. But, um, like, I think I mentioned this bef- uh, in the previous podcast. Like, I'm really into mobile RPGs. Like, I play them regularly. This is the only thing I can play at work. And, you know, like, 99% of them are turn-based. So I have a, like, it's not a shock to me. It, here's so the thing, speak. though. I, I would have had that mindset before, especially during the time that Link and Asteria and Tactics Union were released. However, we just got Tales of the Rays, and Tales of the Rays handles very well. Oh, of well, as I mean, I've already mentioned this last show, but Rays has been the most well handled mobile game that uses the linear motion battle system. So, we since we already have that game. And if this game is going to be turn-based, then it makes me wonder why is it going to be turn-based? Because we already have Tales of the Race. If you are introducing... Like, I understand the concept where the producer was talking about how they're trying to introduce people, new people, into the Tales of IP. And a part of that does change... Means that there's going to be some major changes, including the battle system, it seems. But if you do that, then that's going to that's gonna take away one of the biggest identity identities that Tales of has, which is its battle system. And it just feels like a bit of a step backward, despite it trying to open up to new 
new people to the franchise because I love everything else about this game that it presents. Like, its setting was interesting. I have praised its concept movie and the character designs and how they're all connected together by the same concept of sin and the intrigue behind Vicious. But then, when I saw the screenshot, I felt deflated. And I'm really hoping to see some gameplay footage that can prove me wrong. Well, for me, I was um, my mindset for this was actually um, we've seen the graphics, like right um, from the small scans and whatnot, and the graphics actually look good for a mobile game, just like that mentioned before. And my so I was thinking that maybe they went with turn based because it um, save up more space, I guess, or um, so that they could utilize more of the uh, games. I don't know megabytes for. Something else, like maybe the graphics. Um, on my end, I'm kind of actually neutral to the fact that it's um, a turn-based system. Of course, it was a little of a surprise cause, because of the stuff that um, Rich just mentioned. But um, yeah, I think there might be a reason for it. Because if, if you want to introduce more people into the series and ease more people into it, like I think... Making it turn based, yeah, might reduce like, might make it play better on le- on lower end phones for once. Cause, like, my problem with race is that the the way they handle the um the linear motion battle system is really good. Like when I had it on my old iPad, it played really well. I felt like I was playing like a tails game yes. on mobile. But the thing, the thing was when I switched to my smartphone, which is which isn't actually very low end, but it's not super high end either. So, okay, mid. So basically, it's a mid range type of phone. Race kind of lags horribly on it. Like I can still play it, but the gameplay isn't very good. Isn't very smooth. Now, now that you bring that up, Slip, I'm looking at this screenshot some more, and I'm noticing the four attack buttons at the bottom right corner. What I'm speculating, maybe the battles or the turns, as shown here, might be allowing the player to just rotate between four attacks, as you would when you are linking arts together. So it might be that they're going with that direction because of how they're trying to introduce the Tales of IP to to a new audience. And if that's the case, based on the layout here of the attack buttons, then I can accept that. And I do hope that it does bring them into the more in-depth linear motion battle system games like Tales of the Rays. Hopefully. When I, yeah. when I saw this screenshot, I was thinking more of... You know how they have uh, mobile games that are still turn-based? But if it's your turn, it's... Well, not really... Not really um, real-time, but more like... As soon as you press the button, it's an attack. Like, your character will just go and attack. Like, the four buttons here. Possibly for this? But then again, there's a character highlighted. Maybe you can choose which character will attack (laughs) first, then. Um, Maybe those are, like, Kanata's attacks. Like, you got to choose which attack he'll use. Because they all look like swords to me, so... Maybe. But, like, I can't find, like, so if you just press it, I guess. For example, um, these are yeah. What what Slip said, these are few. Uh, these are Kanata's attacks, but um, I'm not sure if uh, one attack is highlighted. So is so I guess he's gonna use that attack, or you you can you like press them all, so he'll attack. I don't know three multiple times. I've seen games like that. Interesting, but I guess we'll, we'll never, never know, know for certain until we get like a gameplay video. Yes. And thinking about it, maybe we might get it from Tales of the Bar. Probably not, but probably after they reveal all the characters on Famitsu, then we'll probably get some kind of like Crestoria stream saying, "Hey, look at all these videos now." And after they review all the characters, of course, as they would any other. <laughs> stream but that that aside yeah we'll just have to wait for gameplay footage but 
I can understand where everybody's coming from with their concerns because I definitely have those concerns as well, but we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. um, just a small takeaway, but the the whole box there saying wave turn and the treasure box reminds me a little of Asteria. Yep. Yep. It certainly does. And I will not dig myself further into a hole here. <laughs> All right. All right. So do you have any uh, closing thoughts about uh, Crestoria Slip, if you'd like to start? Um, I th I think the direction they're going with it is really interesting. And while um, I'm looking forward to whatever else they reveal about the game. All right. Uh, Abby, how about you? I actually think Crestoria is really promising. Um, the characters are great. The graphics look great from what from the little we've seen. The concept movie was great. The music's really awesome. I guess the only well, I wouldn't say bad thing. And I guess the only thing that people didn't really like was the sneak peek of the battle system. So I guess we'll find out um um another time. Uh, whatever, whatever. I don't know. I don't really. I have a feeling that they just showed the screenshot to test people. Like, are they gonna like it? Are they gonna like it? Or yeah, gonna that's that's it? a very, <laughs> yeah, that's a very firm response to that. Um, they're gonna hate it. <laughs> we need to change it. I, actually, that, <laughs> that does Good make luck. me wonder. How did Japan respond to that screenshot? Because we already know how the West responded. Did anybody pick up on any? Um, Japanese fans' responses to that one particular screenshot, or uh, I haven't checked, but I don't know. I didn't really see much on my end, like reactions to it. They didn't seem angry; more surprised. Like the Twitter posts I've seen were like, "Eh," and like it's turn-based question mark. But I didn't really actually see any angry posts about it. Yeah, as compared to here, like. The only time I saw pretty angry posts back was when Crestoria was first announced, and people were like, "A smartphone game? What happened to the home game? The the game for home consoles?" So yeah, and yeah. they clarified that very quickly. Thank goodness, as opposed to leaving us in the dark. But yeah, but still exactly, on it. exactly. For myself, I pretty much stand in the same boat as what Abby mentioned as well. Like I enjoyed. I do like all the characters. I do like the premise. I do like how the vision orbs were presented in the concept movie. I hope it keeps that graphic style because I like getting sort of like nostalgia vibes from Delphi software games during the Amiga era. The TGS trailer showed off the other characters very fine with the soundtrack being handled well as well, being very different. I just need gameplay footage. That's all I need to see. And it'll determine whether I'll be anticipating this game or just stick to Rays on my phone or whatever else Tales of is going to provide in the future. Okay, so with that said, you can follow me on Twitter at PanBamRichard. Um, I don't have any other particular plugs. Actually, I do have one. I was working on Tales of Recollections during the lead-up to Tales of festival 2018 tales of recollections was my whole spiel on twitter when i was posting many reviews about all the localized tales of games and i will be releasing a all of those videos compiled in one on youtube as well with an additional game oh. that i just finished recently that being berseria is no secret to everybody so expect that to be released on youtube with an entire compilation of all the videos that I made on Twitter. So look forward to that. Or you could uh, hashtag Tales of Recollections to see all the ones that were released on Twitter. Nice. All right. And Slip? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter and Tumblr on Dimension Slip. And um, I'm still chugging away with my friend on that um Exilia and Abyss fanfiction. It's kind of um we're still keeping up with the once a week schedule, so look forward to it I guess. 
And where can they find that again? Oh, it's on Archive of Our Own. Um, the title of the fan fiction is Promised Land, and my friend has also been doing really awesome illustrations for it. So yeah, I've seen the illustrations. They're great. Yeah, they're very, they're very good. Yeah, so even so, even if um, my writing is much to be desired, well, she also helped with the writing for the later chapters. But yeah. At least enjoy the art. Okay, that's all on my end. All right. And Abby? Hi. Uh, so, <laughs> thank you again for visiting AC all this time. And you can follow me personally on Abby745 on Twitter, though I don't really post much there. Um, just visiting AC is enough, guys. Just, just visit the site. We're um, slowly, slowly updating our Tales pages. Right now, you can see the Tales of Celia 2 page. Um, it's already um, live for everyone to view. And yeah, I'm really happy with all of our new members of the AC family. They, you really made AC active. Like if, looking at the post, like, we post every few days <laughs> or almost every day, actually. And it's really fun to see it. The website's so active right now. Yes, and we'd like to extend that as well to all of our patrons. Thank you for supporting us for all these months since, especially for those who have supported us since the launch of our patron page. We can't thank you all enough for constantly helping us out. And um, we will be keeping you posted as to what your funds have contributed to for the website. All right. Now, with that said, for those who have tuned in, thank you for tuning in. Until next time, take care. And Asteria fans, I still love y'all. Keep playing the game if you love it. Adios. (laughs) (laughs) Right. I guess I need to... I'll just continue recording, but... Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's one way to end the episode.